After a two-year gap, we finally return to the United States of America. Intel Extreme Masters, New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Intel Extreme Masters, New York City. Hey, there we go. There, there, there. Eventually get there. Uh, you'll have probably noticed that I have an extra bit of a tire this morning. Uh, I ran into a bit of trouble on the subway and, you know, like a good Samaritan, dived in. So they've called me Captain America now, which I don't know. How are you doing, Sue? I'm doing pretty good. I wasn't feeling too well this morning, but then this morning, I just really need to talk about that incident. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am a New Yorker. I have been commuting on the subway for many, many years, but I've never seen what I saw today, and that is a full-blown cat fight breakout right next to Red Eye, of all people. He had coffee spilled all over him, but he was able to break up the fight like the hero that he is. So this is your Captain America today. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's move on from that. Um, Let's talk a little bit about yesterday, because uh, we had a fun day yesterday, really interesting open brackets, but I guess probably reasonably predictable in terms of who came through. Yeah, we had four Koreans advance. I'm, I mean, I'm sure you guys aren't surprised. I'll, I was talking to Hyun backstage. He was also saying, you know, because when Life lost in the winner's bracket finals, he was like, oh, it doesn't matter. He's just going to come back out anyway. And that is what actually happened. So, you know, it's sad that, you know, our foreigner hopes in the open bracket didn't make it through, but it is what it is, and we can just hope that the foreigners that are in the group stages today are able to show a better performance. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we do have a few more uh, for you to cheer on, as it were, some foreign talent. Uh, before we get there, though, let's just update you as to how we're going to run things over the next three days. Uh, we obviously had the open bracket yesterday. Uh, today we'll be going through the group stage. Oh, my God. Okay. Hello, Carmack. How are you today? Hi, I'm great. <laughs> I, I believe you're out here to troll. Absolutely. Smigs. Oh, oh. oh, good. I'm glad. Okay. Smigs, we have a tradition at Intellect Stream Masters. Okay. If we have a ho Oh, you're very nervous, I can see. <laughs> if we have a host below... By the way, anyone here follow Smigs on Twitter? You should. <laughs> if you have anyone uh, that hosts Intellect Stream Masters below 13337 followers, we get you to that point, and if we successfully do, you have to sing. So oh, if you get, by the end of the event, I'm not done here yet. By the end of the event, if you get 13,337 followers, we need you to sing for the end oh, credits. God. I don't take no for an answer. Okay. Well, guys, I'm perfectly fine with you guys not following me. It's perfectly understandable. There's so many other people to follow. I, I, I understand if you guys don't want to follow me. Yeah, I mean, who wants to see my tweets anyway? Yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. So, so that's the bet, right? So she has to get 13... So, in other words, you guys out there right now that are tuned in have to follow, okay, Sully Rabbit, at Sully Rabbit on Twitter. And if we get out of 13,337 followers, she will sing the, the closing credits on Sunday. Is that right? Say so yes, Smix. Yes. Yay! There we go. Good. Well done, Carmack. Another successful oh. troll by the poll. Uh, right, so we were saying uh, the schedule for the next few days. Let's get back to the actual show now. Uh, yesterday, of course, with those fabulous open brackets. Today, we'll move into the group stage of round of 16. And interestingly, because it's dual tournament, we'll only play through four matches so that we get one, one player from each group that qualifies 
before the quarterfinals on Saturday. But tomorrow, we'll then play the last four games off to find the other four for the quarterfinals as well. Uh, and then back on uh, Sunday, of course, we'll have the grand finals. Those 16 players that are in the groups are very interesting. The four groups look like this, groups A through to D. Uh, We'll skip Group A for the moment, we'll come back to that at the end. But Group B, let's take a look at Group B first. Naniwa, Hero, QXC and Hack, two foreigners in there with some hope. Uh, well, obviously everyone already knows this. Naniwa is a very, very good player. Yes, he's a very controversial player, always has a lot of drama surrounding him. But you can just maybe note that as his, you know, his passion for the game is so enormous that it comes out through other ways. Uh, but I know he does have a lot of fans that are cheering for him. He has shown that, you know, he's been practicing Korea really, really hard. Maybe this will be the tournament where that practice comes out. Yep. Uh, Group C, very interesting as well. Three Koreans. Uh, curious, I think we all know how good he can be. Flash, well, the god of brood war. And then Don Regu, the previous IEM New York champion from two years ago, in a group with State. Uh, State beat QXC in the qualifier to get this far. So he's done well, but can you see him coming out of Group C with three big Koreans? Uh, State... I think he's a really nice guy, you know, he works really hard, but it's going to be so hard. So, so, so hard. It's three Koreans, not just any Koreans or any even faceless Koreans. They are big names, Koreans that have made a name for themselves and not easily. They've proven themselves time and time again, so I don't know, it's going to be really hard. All right, well, let's, uh, let's put the groups back up again and show you Group D up there as well. Uh, Revival, SOS, Huck and San. Again, another really tough group for Huck. Uh, Revival, we know all about him. He's won IEM Shanghai. SOS, second time out of career, previously played in DreamHack. San has always been one of those players we talked about as being, you know, regular code S. Always there or thereabouts, but playing really well this week. And then our friend, the, the Canadian Huck. Uh, has he got a chance of getting out of that one? You know what? This is a very tough group, as you said. Obviously, SOS and San are top, top level, I mean, Protoss players. They've been beating everybody left and right, um, top level play. SOS is known for his renowned creative play. But if, if there's a saving grace to this, it's that all, you know, there's three Protosses in this group, obviously Hug being one of them. But because he'll have to play two PVPs and because that matchup is so, you know, kind of coin flippy, we'll just see how it goes. I think he has a pretty good shot. Okay, uh, let's turn our attention now to Group A. It's uh, got three Zergs and a Protoss in it. Uh, Zest uh, used to be known as uh, Wookie, I think, back in the day. Uh, TLO, Hyun, and Life. Um, again, another interesting group full of three uh, very top-tier Koreans in many ways, you know, from one way or another. Life being a man, precocious talent at 16. We know all about him. Hyun's been fantastic all year long. He's got so many points from non-WCS uh, tournaments. And then you've got TLO in there. And, do you, do you feel like TLO might get out of that group? Well, you know, there are a lot of ZVZs in this group. Um, I've talked about this before. Life struggles in a ZVZ. So if there's a chance for TLO to beat Life, I think that there's a very strong chance, actually, because uh, TLO has shown that he has a very strong ZVZ. So I'm rooting for our Dario. Good news. Uh, a foreigner to cheer for. Make some noise, please. The, the players are about to join us on stage. Make a lot of noise because there's a few of you here. And I know how loud you New Yorkers can be. Please welcome to the stage, TLO and Hyun. The sign in the front row says Hyun Believable or Bleed Liquid Blue. I like the fact that we've got one of each in the front row. Ladies and gents, it's time for game number one of Group A. Here's your commentary team, Nathanius. Take it away. Thank you, Red Eye. Welcome, Intel Extreme Masters New York. I am Nathanius. With me is Kolaris, and we got another ZVZ to, to cast together, sir. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yesterday's was extremely, extremely cool, uh, as we saw Life and Don Regu, uh, more so than not, face off against one another. Don Regu actually played another ZVZ before that, uh, but it was really the Life Don Regu series uh, that was the kind of tip of the iceberg that we saw for ZVZ. Some very small little nuances, some cool stuff that was going on there. And Don Regu had absolutely masterful positioning uh, and just execution in that series. Yeah, the ZVZ that we've seen so far in this tournament has been top notch. Of course, uh, both of these players being in the same group as life might have to deal a little bit with those yeah. competition. We have, of course, the players now doing their vetoes. 
As far as, as far as ZVZ goes, Kalaris, any, any particular thoughts on maps you don't like in this matchup? Not really, not really. I, again, Yonsu going from Hyun is something that I'm not too surprised about because it, there is that potential to be really aggressive very early on. Uh, and But at the same time, TLO's not really the kind of guy that does that too much. So uh, TLO, when we see him going to ZVZ, we see a lot of, you know, a lot of ZVZs that go drawn out. Uh, and I, I enjoy watching that from TLO. He has a very, very good execution. But Hyun in this matchup in ZVZ is extraordinarily good. I mean, like, loses very few series. In Heart of the Swarm so far, 68% win ratio. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah, the last, uh, last series that uh, Hyun actually dropped, he played several matches in the Acer Team Story Cup in the week leading up to this. Uh, did take a loss in a series to Vortex, though, on the Fragbite Masters, so yep. not invincible. TLO has a lot of opportunity here. And also, like you said, neither of these players really strike you as the, the super early pool play. That mid-game style aggression is what we're really going to be looking forward to seeing from both of them. Well, again, you know, they, they can mix it up. We're not, we, we can't, like, completely throw it out of the realms of possibility, yeah. but I'm expecting, you know, a little bit longer drawn out games here. Derelict Watcher is our first map. Uh, it's a pretty nice, actually, in general, you see quite a bit of Munalist play on that map. Just because the third base can be so isolated, you see that Ling attack with the follow-up of Munalist sometimes. But uh, for the most part, I'm expecting a lot of Roach play, just trying to get things going there. And uh, as we see now, TLO and Hyun entering their booths and getting ready for this match. So I I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, I, I really think it will. And also, to your point, you know, both of these players actually like to go, or at least I know Hyun really loves his roaches and in almost every oh, yeah. matchup. Wherever he can throw them in, he's a, he's a roach kind of guy. But Derelict Watcher, you said, good for Mutalisk play. That third base has a decent bit of air uh, space behind it yeah. as well for the, for the maneuvering. So I like this. I, I think there's a good amount of options that are available to these players. And... And any, any other any other thoughts? Well, uh, it, it, having those mutalist tendencies sometimes doesn't obviously uh, discount all the roach play that we do see from players like Hyun quite a lot. Um, and because there is so much space in the middle of the map, because you can get really good positioning, is something that we see uh, very well executed in WCS Europe by like people like Targa, for example. Uh, then you obviously can see very very strong engagements from each other, and more so than um, other maps. When you see that Roach, if you want to transition onto Infesta, I actually feel that Hydralisk is a little bit better on this map to transition to quicker. Because if you go for Infestas and your opponent has set up such a great concave, then they're very thinly spread. Fungals aren't going to be as well executed in those really, really open areas in the middle of the map. So it's a very, very small thing, but it's, it can be important. Yeah, that's a good point. As compared to a map like Belshir Vestas, there's not as many twists and turns. Yeah. The center of the field is is very exposed, actually, I like that analysis quite a bit. The area of effect spells won't be as strong, and I think that's also going to make sure to push the mechanics of these players. Of course, TLO, a guy that uh, really he's very, takes a lot of pride in his mechanic, ab mechanical ability, oh, yeah. putting out those units, getting those injects, and he's, uh, he's also one of the more creative players that we have in the scene, willing to mix it up pretty much on any map. Yeah, you're, you're damn right about that, and uh, I got thrown under the bus yesterday just before he was having an interview with Red Eye about his Swarm Host play. But it's, a, again, he mentioned that it's a style that he's not you know, as used to, but uh, just trying to mix it in and trying to make it work. Uh, and that's, that's the kind of thing that you see from Taylor. But he has to bring a very, very solid game against this man, Hyun, because again, he very rarely loses ZVZ. Obviously, you said he lost to Vortex. Vortex, in turn, very good in Zerg, Zerg versus Zerg. Uh, but aside from that, very few series lost by Hyun in ZVZ recently. Yeah, very, very few series lost overall. Hyun's just, he's really been on a tear as yeah. far as European circuit of tournaments go as well. Taking a dream hack as well this year. He's, he's probably one of the scariest Korean players that managed to come out here and compete in these foreign tournaments. So he's, he's one of those guys you have to look out for no matter what race you play. Definitely. He's, a, he's an absolute monster. He's one of the players here uh, that can go all the way. It's interesting because he was initially seeded into the open brackets. Um, but then, because we had a few players actually drop out and stuff like that, he got he got promoted to business class. He's now uh, he got straight into those group stages, uh, and you know, rightly so. He's he's got a good win ratio across all the matchups. He's been a champion. Um, but can he do the business here in New York when the player lineup, just in general, even for his group alone, with players like Zest, TLO, and Life in there, really, really top level play from those players. We saw Zest in the Korean qualifiers look absolutely amazing. And he's really what I want to look out for this, uh, this tournament. That's a very good point to make. Aside from anything that happens in this group or even in this match, there's so many other good players to go up against once uh, these players do reach that third group stage. 
Um, we do have our lobby invites going, so we'll be kicking this match off in just a little bit. Yep, Derelict Watch at our first map. Uh, and I'm looking forward to this, as is TLO probably with his lovely scarf. I wonder if he's borrowed that from Snoot, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, both, both TL players bringing scarves to, the, yeah. to the, 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 booth, the booths this time. Maybe it's a little bit chilly in there, maybe. Uh, but as always, yeah, TLO looking prepped and ready to go. TLO had a great start to Heart of the Swamp. An absolutely great start with, with um, you know, actually transitioning on through to WCS Europe Season 1 and doing very well there. TLO... Had, had that good start, teetered off a little bit during seasons two and three, uh, but now here, just looking a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more composed, and he currently sits at, what, like 24th in the WCS ranking? Now, it's very, very difficult, even if he were to win this entire tournament, for him to get a p position at BlizzCon, yeah. he would get 750 points and he'd be sat at around 2,800 some, and that's, like, on the cusp, on yeah. the very, very cusp of top 16, but... TLO is one of the guys in previous interviews that mentioned he partially liked the old system uh, of, you know, there not being too much WCS points in tournaments because it was a standalone. Like, you can focus on that one tournament, it didn't mean more going on. So maybe he feels a little bit comfy here, knowing that it's not just the, the avenue of trying to get to BlizzCon on the line for him, but it's just a tournament, it's just a little bit of money. Well, quite a bit of money. <laughs> and uh, he wants to just kind of settle in with that. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those situations where as TLO, you have to be feeling pretty good. He, as you stated, playing around the Swarm Host style. He's very flexible. Uh, we'd actually talked to him a little bit yesterday um, behind the scenes, and he'd said wasn't liking the Mutalisk play when it came out in Heart of the Swarm, but he's been really mixing it up a bit more so far. And I feel, especially with this group, you know, TLO also has other tournaments to look forward to. He'll be competing in DreamHack Winter next month. And just to get there, he'd actually taken out Life, who is also in this group, uh, to get that qualification spot. So he has to be feeling comfortable, at least, with the players that he has to go against. Hyun could be the biggest obstacle in his way. Yeah, Hyun's a very, very strong opponent here. Uh, but again, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Zest's going to play things out. I believe uh, Zest versus Life is on our second MLG stream uh, with the Axlav and Axel Toss uh, actually casting that. So you can go and watch that as well. Uh, and I'm, I'm definitely going to be going back and watching those VODs because yeah. Zest made me a big, big fan of him during those Korean qualifiers. It's very similar. We had uh, at the Intellect Stream Masters Shanghai, we had Myunzik also making a really strong name for himself in the qualifiers, kind of bombed out in the main tournament. Um, but, you know, we'll, I think Zest could surpass that quite easily. Yeah, it's always neat to see the players that not, not necessarily you know used to getting those invites into the tournaments, but being able to win those qualifiers and getting deep. Personally, I didn't see too much of Zest play, so kind of kind of excited about that as well to to kind of see you know what the what the newcoming Koreans can really do here. And I mean, not to dismiss his skill, you know, obviously very high high level Korean player, oh, yeah. but we're uh... it was good, man. It was really really fun to watch. It was fun to cast as well. Uh, but now, again, we're just getting geared up for our first series here, guys, for the Intel Extreme Masters. Day number two, uh, as we have Derelict Watch, our first map between TLO and Hyun. Uh, Hyun's just sorting out some settings here, and we'll be getting on with it in just a second. Uh, so bear with us, guys, whilst Hyun makes sure he's comfortable. It's all about the players here. It is certainly all about the players. We want them to feel as comfortable as possible uh, when going into these games. And uh, actually, you know, for this season in general, I'm glad we have booths. Booth. Yeah. Booth is a cool yeah. addition. It's really, it's really nice. And if, if you ever talk to a player, it's that you get that cool feeling of being in the booth. You're, you've got that position of power. It can be a little yeah. bit, a little bit nerve wracking. <laughs> but you've all, you also have your personal space. You feel safe, secure, and warm while you play your games of StarCraft. It's a, it's a pod to space, man. That's, it's. I've sat in them before, and you're like looking out on everything. It's like, wow, this is like a little command center. I'm loving it. Uh, but yeah, we're just now waiting here, guys. In terms of the groups overall, Nathanius, uh, who who are you, like your picks to go very very far? Uh, obviously, there's some there's, there's some very clear names there. Is there anybody kind of out of the norm that you think might be able to do very well? Well, I mean, just looking at the setup of of these groups, there's a lot of very strong Korean players, and on any given day, some of them can. Over, I think very easily overwhelm each other. For example, I look at Group D and I see players like Revival, SOS, Huck, mm. and Sun. And Huck's one of those players, sometimes he's very hit or miss in, yeah, in yeah. his matchups. He'll either completely destroy his opponents or he'll fall flat on his face. He's not, you know, not the most consistent, but if he can bring it up, if he's stepped up and prepared enough for this tournament, he does have an opportunity to take them out. And I think some of the favorites, uh, SOS, we saw Son play some fantastic games yesterday. Can't really dismiss Revival. Did quite well for himself at the IM Shanghai. And 
He's just one of those players that can really come out. A lot of his uh, former TSL Zerg players just they kind of they dance around for a little bit and then they just come out of nowhere to strike for a big victory. Yeah, they, they certainly have done. And uh, Hyun was on TSL for a while, I believe, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there is certainly a lot of pedigree behind those ex TSL players, uh, the SCV life. That actually, it was one of my favorite teams until it ended up disappearing. Man, oh, I loved TSL. It was so much fun. You had like Killer on there as well, or whatever he's called now, Swagger. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why he changed his name to that, man. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, other than that, yeah, very, very cool team. And now TLO is also just uh, getting ready here as well. But if I look at the groups in general, uh, I would like to see Zest do very, very well. Um, uh, but I would also like to see Curious. In fact, just the two people that went through from the qualifiers for Korea, uh, they looked great in the qualification processes. Um, Cur uh, Curious, in fact, actually defeating Innovation during all of that, was it? Yeah, I think so. So pretty cool stuff. Pretty yeah. cool stuff. Not not easy to get this far, but looks like we've got everything set up, guys. We're going into the game. We'll be starting the first map of day two here at the Intel Extreme Masters New York. As we shall. Derelict Watcher will be our map. Let's get into game number one for our first CVZ of the day. If we have spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner, our blue Zerg, representing Quantic Gaming as well as Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Hyun. TLO looking uh, quite ready as well himself in this matchup. This yep. is not going to be an easy feat for either of them, Claris. That's true. And spawning up to the top right-hand corner here as our Red Zerg, representing Liquid as well as Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for TLO. Good quite German, a few TLO sir. fans here. Yeah. Yeah, TLO, a uh, bit of a favorite here. One of our one of our few foreign players left in this tournament has uh, quite quite a bit ahead of him to uh, to get through here. Very powerful opponents in this ZVZ already. No no eight pools like we saw yesterday. Nothing nothing very fast. Uh, and I, I feel like that's kind of a, tr a hallmark of these guys. Is, is it's more so that two base play if they're going to get aggressive. And, and, and you know. Either way, these guys could just go for incredibly macro-based strategies uh, in the end. We have a pool opening from our uh, German Zerg player, and Hyun going for the hatchery first. Yeah, just going for the hatchery first, just as a proviso. Apparently, I am observing, and I do not have my hotkey set up, so this will be a rough and bumpy road, <laughs> but we'll get on with it, as uh, we do indeed have that spawning pool only from TLO, whilst we have Hyun. He claims the advantage, just a small little incremental advantage, but it will get going there for Hyun. Uh, and meanwhile, once the queens come out, uh, then uh, TLO does catch up slightly, because obviously he has a spawning pool down first. Uh, he will get his queens out there a little bit quicker. Uh, but there is still that small little advantage for Yum. You know, it's important to talk about the advantages. In the Zerg versus Zerg that we saw yesterday between Dong Regu and Life, the Belshir Vestige map, Dong Regu took that little bit of a risk, got the hatchery faster, ended up getting his, natch his third base faster as well as his fourth. A whole game trying to keep this, uh, keep the pace of the game in his favor by getting those earlier expansions. And it can also be a sign of confidence in the matchup overall. Yeah, it certainly can. It, it really can. Uh, well, what do we have going on now? We've switched things over to our lovely Infeza. He's back. Uh, I would be scared if we didn't have our darling Infeza to be able to guide us through this. Uh, but now we shall get things going. So we do have, obviously, that uh, gas going down for TLO and uh, wanting to get that speed out pretty quickly just to keep himself uh, quite safe. Meanwhile, we have Hyun going for no gas. Now, mixing in. Uh, maybe an extra queen or two here for the defense would be quite nice for Hyun. And at the same time, just taking those two gases later on. He doesn't want to leave the window too open for speed to be exploitable. And if he does, we may see, you know, walls being created with evolution chambers at the front, uh, just to make sure he's not breached uh, defensively. Yeah, and that's a really interesting thing to bring about is, to what extent would he be willing to get aggressive that Hyun would need to defend? He's playing with no gas for so long. We saw some aggressive play come out of Dong Regu uh, versus Life, uh, um, I believe it was one of the first games, where just trying to exploit that lack of having the gas. And now the scout comes in for Hyun, gets the read, he can see that TLO has the gas. So he knows there's that opportunity for TLO to use the early speedlings and also the opportunity that he could throw down a baneling nest, exactly. even potentially something crazy like a Roach yeah, very important for him to know that gas is still being mined here from TLO. And he gets that scout. Unfortunately, the Zergling does pay 
for a price with uh, its life, but other than that, we just have Hyun now even being very aggressive with the creep spread. He's already up to four queens, and this is why, obviously, you need these queens out if you're not going to go for speed. You want that little bit of extra defensive position. Now, these two queens actually can kill this Overlord. Normally, you'd be a little bit scared in ZVZ to venture out with your queens to try and kill these, just in case there were that many, uh, quite a few speedlings out to try and catch that. Uh, but because he knew how many Zerglings there were around and two Queens kill it off very quickly, uh, he felt very comfortable with that. Yeah, and now we have TLO trying to run a few Zerglings into Hyun's base. I just want to briefly point this out. Very nice uh, using the spawns, not only that, but the, the spawning pool timings. Hyun was able to get the read that TLO had opened up with gas. TLO, to this point, still has not seen the main base of Hyun. Was not 100% sure whether he had opened Gasless or with that heavy Queen opener until he ran the Zerglings into the Queen. So there was that potential there for TLO to be hit with that aggression. And now he's moving straight into the lair. He got his Speedling and his Baneling Nest, but it doesn't look like he wants to commit to any level of early aggression himself. Yeah, a relatively quick layer here from TLO with that. And, uh, well... He did see the entire wall of his opponent, and thus that gives TLO a good indication as to what his opponent's are into it in general. Double Evolution Chamber as well as Roach Warren. Hello, Roaches with a lot of range upgrades and, you know, just trying to get that going. Uh, but the Zerglings are trying to deny an Overlord kill. Uh, so that was, again, good usage there of that defensive posture by Hyun, just to deny another Overlord. And what is TLO going to do here? He has all four Gas Geysers and he's getting his third. These Speedlings are keeping his third well defended. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting setup from TLO. He has a few options here, and as he takes the Spire, uh, looking at what Hyun has set up, getting the plus one Roach attack, getting the plus one Carapace, he'll have an opportunity when his lair finishes up to maybe try to go for Roach speed, try to hit some sort of timing, but with how fast this lair came in, it looks very good for him Ooh. to actually get the tech together. Nice try us around there, but because he has so many Queens early on, he banked up a lot of energy for Transfuses, so can push that away. He tries to take his third, but that's going to get cancelled. It's going to be forced to cancel. He just doesn't have the amount of units to defend it. And this is really... Really, really good opener here from TLO, but at the same time, how is he going to use his Spire? With the Roach one going down as well and combating 1-1 one, one Roaches, if Hyun wants to, you know, try and get something out to deal with uh, Mutalisk if he goes for it, uh, we might not see a full committal here to Mutalisks for TLO, but he's done so much about den with denying that third base. Yeah, it's really nice, especially since he already has his own third base completed, not yet moving into the drones, but with this fast of a Spire, he can get some Mutalisks out to help push away this road shove that is going to be coming from Hyun. His road speed is now almost halfway done. These Zerglings continuing to just be aggressive, finding every little hole that they can, even shoving away those creep tumors that you mentioned. Hyun, uncharacteristically, we're seeing just a lot of creep spread, something that a lot of people uh, debate quite, quite much in CVZ, whether to give your opponent that speed boost as they're coming towards you at the exchange of the vision of seeing them coming. Mm, I'm under the impression that, you know, if he does want to be more aggressive with that creep spread, then maybe he just wants to get really, really aggressive with these roaches and pile them across the map very, very quickly. Um, but, you know, it was getting a little out of hand. Obviously, his third base is about to get up. He can defend that quite nicely with the roaches, but he has to be careful about this mutalist follow-up. Uh, the creep spread in the middle between these two bases is going to help those queens to get over to that third eventually and then be able to defend that against the mutalists that are coming along. But right now, Hyun has very little clue about the uh, spire that's actually back there. Yeah, the oh, Overseer, <laughs> Overseer sees the Mutalisks coming. There were no Spore Crawlers on the map behind this. TLO immediately moving into the double evolution chambers, getting his own road speed. But these Mutalisks coming to attack them, this is one of those situations where Hyun says, I have so many hit points. These Roaches are so tanky. I can use them to try yeah. to deal damage either way, potentially shutting down this third base to Mutalisks. Yeah, the Roaches can't shoot up, but they cannot, uh, the Mutalisks can't kill them fast enough. And Hyun absolutely had to move out here, and he actually is going to do quite a bit of damage with these Roaches. Remember, they do have warm ones, so really, really good upgrades that Mutalisks though, if they didn't have to be dealing with all of these roaches that are going to kill the third, this is a great move by Hyun, then TLO could have been over the other side of the map with these Mutalisks. So an absolutely important move out here by Hyun that has bought him a lot of time, but he loses a lot of roaches. Does the counter from TLO, if he wants to go for it, shut his opponent down? Well, that's the real question because he's got the Spore Crawlers already on the way. He's making the transition into Hydralisks. You said it best. He needed to use the Roaches to bring that pressure, not only to deal the damage, shut down the third base and pick a couple of drones off, but to keep the Mutalisks from going over to his side of the field. Yeah. And now we see oh. them kind of perusing the map with these Roaches, but these three Roaches, they're just buying him time again. Hyun knows he needs to buy time to deal with his opponent's potential counterattack. And those three Roaches head off there, but TLO realizes that. TLO recognizes that his opponent is trying to buy that time, so he just starts plowing across with these roaches, sends his mutalists to deal with that, because in the grand scheme of things, he knows that his opponents had quite a lot of time to uh, prepare for mutalists, so 
sending those off is a far better way than sending all the roaches off with Zogo for the engagement. Yeah, he's just bringing the roaches straight up. Now, there are some Hydralisks for Hyun, not quite as tanky as the roaches. He has the Spore Crawler with his army as well, preventing the Mutalisks from coming in. It takes them out in three shots, and he's just going to shove him back on the creep, really helping these Hydralisks to keep their mobility. And now oh. away from them, the Transfuse is trying to drop, and the engagement looking to be uh, pretty solid, at least picking off all the Mutalisks for Hyun. Very, very nice to do where this Transfuse is there, and still the upgrade advantage in favor of Hyun. Those roaches trying to do something, but they're really not getting a whole lot done for TLO. This cost, effectively, cost effectiveness for Hyun. Hyun has been far superior because behind this, his third base is still mining. Uh, yes, he has one extra drone, sure, but it's the, it's the overall income that really, really matters here for Hyun, as well as that upgrade advantage for a second. Yeah, that slight income lead over a course of several minutes really starts to snowball on itself. Having Being able to split the drones around also means you're not mining as a focus on, say, your natural expansion. The resources there will last a little bit longer into the game. And we can see now the plus two attack is starting for Hyun. He'll start to take a little bit of an advantage. He could have started the plus two when he got his lair, wanted to put out those Hydralisks a little bit faster. So getting the tech at the expense of the upgrades does mean that if TLO starts his plus two two very quickly, then he can catch up or at least stay remotely even on the upgrade. Upgrades. And because of the position that we find these two players in now, um, with TLO's third base having been delayed and him not having as much lava during all of that, TLO's actually, well, he's actually droning up here, but um, I think Hyun, with the production capabilities he's had for quite this time, if he goes once he has 2-2 with just a maxed out Roach Hydra, he could do huge, huge amounts of damage because obviously plus two carapace is never going to be done for TLO before an engagement would come. Uh, and that against, you know, a bit more of a heavier Hydra composition here for Hyun could do absolute wonders for him. Very good point, those Hydralisks with the faster attack speed and longer range. Hyun being able to make that transition earlier. We see Hydralisks on the way for TLO. He's just now started the range upgrade. There will be a very small time where Hyun has an opportunity to use this earlier mix of the Hydralisks, but I think TLO, he's trying to recover from that position. He's managed to get the mining on the third base situated if he doesn't get hit with this aggression anytime soon. And as they say that Hyun starts to move out across the map, he needs a little bit more time to get himself ready to stop this army. It's that max out, man. It, it, TLO just could not combat it right now. He's trying to alleviate a slight supply block that he's got here. Six overlords on the way. But once these extra 15 roaches finish up for Hyun and just start going across the map with the little bit of creep spread that he's got there to get them over there quicker as well. Uh, but he's got to be careful about this uh, concave that TLO has set up very, very nicely. Yeah, like we said, no infestors uh, in this game. And there's so much open space, it's really hard to get anything like that. The spread is so nice. Coming in now, TLO has that arc, but the Hydralisk coming in from Hyun on the bottom side also doing a lot more damage. He went just before plus two weapons was finished here as Hyun, so he doesn't really have that extra advantage. But at the same time, he's still just going to overpower. His army was so strong, his production capabilities behind this, after he got his opponent's third, were fantastic. Even the Queen's come along for the ride here as well for Hyun. And now he takes full, full command of this game. A fantastic use of the Queens, as you stated, for the transfuses and still Hydralisks alive, pressing up into the natural ramp. The drone's being pulled to try to hold this up. Hyun wants to take the first map in the series, and he's up 100 supply, Kolaris. Yeah, this is uh, going to be very downhill. There you go. GG for game number one. Hyun will take the first map in this best of three. And, oh boy, he... That was, that was really well done by him. The way in which he was buying time, the way in which he just said, I have to, absolutely have to kill that third. You have to in that situation because his had been denied for so, so long. You cannot play from that backwards position there in ZVZ. Yeah, we, we'd kind of talked about how the, the very early Mutalus play was nice since he could get it out in time for the Roaches, but even making his own transition into the Roach Zergling play, not having enough to defend, needing to pull those Mutalisks back, cost TLO the opportunity of being able to go in there and try to deal some crippling damage with the Mutalisks. It just ended up also giving the faster upgrades to Hyun, which really helped him vault towards that late game. And now we go on to game number two in just a little bit here. Uh, as TLO has to pull himself back into this. Aklon Wastes is our map. There are a few locations on this map, especially at the chokes of bases where Infestor play after Roaches can become very, very evident. But it's exactly how we said going into game number, number one, that you don't see them as much on Derelict Watcher because it is so open. As we saw in that last engagement, you imagine landing fungals on, on those roaches that were just in a line, nothing really behind them. That's was, nowhere near so spread out. So spread. Very little opportunity to deal any area of effect damage with those forces, but we're loading into map number two, Akalon Waste. As you stated, a lot more choke points, but we're here, and well, 
It's time to kick off game number two. Oh yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this. Intel Extreme Masters New York, as we have game number two between TLO and Hyun here on Aklon Wastes. All right, spawning out to the bottom right-hand corner here as our blue... No, actually, let's, let's go up to the top left-hand corner for a second here. Spawning up to the top left as our red Zerg representing Team Liquid, as well as Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for TLO. TLO going for a, a pretty interesting strategy the last game, but not, not really able to make it work versus that big Roach push. It's a tough one. It is a tough one. And now this man, currently one game up representing Quantic Gaming as well as Korea. Ladies and gents, give it up for Hyun. Hyun opening up 1-0. Very secure, very confident in this match. Went with the gasless play to kick off the first map. And that wasn't even one of the maps with the smaller ramps. Uh, there's still a good amount of space that you can abuse in those situations. Aqualon Waste is quite similar. Very large entrance into the natural expansion. Um, and both players not... No early pool for the second game. Just important to just make sure we know everything's going to be starting off reasonably slow. Yeah, and uh, we'll see what they want to get done here. Uh, it is one of those big fo macro focus maps on uh, on Aqualon Waste. So not only in the other matchups, but you can also see it a lot in ZVZ here as well. Uh, and one thing that you do see a few times, especially from TLO, is what we saw in Challenger uh, against Livco, which was, you know, a, a, ch a go, a try at Swarm Host play in this matchup. And if you can get to it eventually, yes, it does provide you a lot of stability, but it's getting there, getting the number of Swarm Hosts uh, that is a tricky, tricky slope, especially against a player like Hyun, that if you are going a little bit more tech heavy and trying to kind of skip normal standard steps in ZVZ, he will say, well, I'm just going to get a lot of units and kill you. Yeah, so, I mean, tough. just looking at the push that he brought in the last game towards the third base of TLO, if you try to rush for any other level of tech, that Spire was in there just in time to barely hold it off after he'd already lost the third base. This game, however, we see both players opening up relatively similar. No gas yet for Hyun, but both players with the hatchery first into the spawning pool. Uh, no no real distinct advantage as compared to the first map. Yeah, and it's a good point that you actually bring up the Spire there because it was it was something kind of like a little bit fancy that TLO was trying to do, a little bit surgical, a little bit precise, but T uh, then Hyun, he's, he is the Hyun stoppable man. He's just that sledgehammer blow, a very, very basic unit that just comes in and absolutely wrecks your day. Uh, so maybe, you know, all of that gas investment for TLO, the Mutalisks, let's, let's be honest, they did not pay for themselves at all. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at it as at the end of the game, both players ended up going for this pretty much the same composition of Roach Hydra. The difference, TLO delayed himself by trying to make the Mutalisks work. There wasn't a hole there uh, to prick against Hyun with, so I, I feel like this game, maybe not take that, that tech risk. We might see TLO just try to play Hyun's game here a little bit uh, the same way back to him. Yeah, I actually, I, I think that's a really good point. I would like to see that. I would like to see uh, TLO basically just go back to basics. Just it's, it's time for that Roach mid game, seeing what my opponent wants to do from there, and um, maybe even playing from a little bit behind uh, against his opponent if he wants that full scouting information. And Hyun? Already gets in with two Zerglings to see what's going on. He still sees more gas on the way while speed is being researched. Yeah, I, I kind of like this play from Hyun. He al always making sure to get those Zerglings inside. TLO was not able to last time. The Overlord uh, getting picked up by the Queen does mean at least one Zergling will get in for TLO. He will be able to see that there's no gas taken yet for Hyun. However, he's already made the commitment into getting his lair together, so it doesn't seem that he wants to try to find a way to abuse this. Now, the question is, is though, is can TLO exploit this in a similar way to how we saw Don Regu and Life play out. Uh, no, was it Don Regu and Sasquatch? Yes, it was. Um, can he exploit this? Because now he sees no gases, obviously. Does he say now, Bane Ling Ness goes down, speeds on the way? Does he make a lot of links here and try and go for this? Because he knows his opponent can't have Bane Ling Ness. He canceled the lair. He canceled the lair. Exactly. Yeah, he's going for the tech. It looks like TLO wants to try to exploit this uh, potential weakness. The lack of gas means no speed available, no banelings available for Hyun. He's just acquired double gas after the Zergling got kicked out. He actually took all four gas geysers, so Hyun needs to play a little bit of catch up here, get his tech together, because TLO's already pumping out tons of speedlings. But this is the cool thing. Hyun knows kind of what was going on as well. Ah, maybe he doesn't, because there's the layer on the way now. He took all four of his gas geysers. He's trying to get in gas as quickly as possible, maybe to catch up with that, but he hasn't started his speed.
lead. He's just going for Roach as well as the Evolution Chamber. He's going to try and hold at the very ramp, I feel, here. Whilst getting another supply block on his opponent. These queens are a little bit exposed out uh, towards exposed. the outside. The Zerglings are making their way over here. Being able to catch them before they can retreat to the oh. wall would be very nice. Another Evolution he Chamber. Wall. He's trying to get the wall set up. The queens are getting into position. The Zerglings will oh. be able to bypass that, though. Getting a surround on all three of these queens. And the drone's already being pulled from the natural to defend for Hyun. It's 35 links against zero. Zero links. One spine crawler trying to hold on here for Hyun but it's not going to be enough. The drone's also in combat, but that is all he has. He's got links on the way. Are these going to be enough to hold this? They don't even have speed. TLO finding the perfect way to exploit the weakness of Hyun's build, getting in that mineral, nat the natural mineral line, bringing in additional Zergling reinforcements. He's constantly streaming them across the field, now building Banelings at his opponent's base. There's a few roaches on the way for Hyun, but he's lost so much getting here, Kalaris. Can, is there, what can he do to really hold this back? Uh, not a whole lot. He's going to try and get those roaches out, but he's taken so much damage. Uh, he hasn't taken too many drone losses, but all in all, with that Baneling waddling in, and oh, there's still so many lings available to him. He can just go in here, surround more drones, kill off those roaches as well if he wants to. TLO, with such a commanding position in game number two, read his opponent perfectly, and Hyun was not able to deal with it. Yeah, just a fantastic play. He can try to maneuver the drones around as much as he wants, but without that income, he's not going to produce units to stop this 34 drones killed an incredible amount of damage by the German Zerg and GG TLO takes game number two against Jan. Very nice stuff there by TLO. He saw exactly what he needed to do and Aklon Waste is a map in ZVZ that has a big big ramp. You cannot be straying out so far maybe Mm, actually, no, I don't want to overanalyze that. I was going to say that maybe the Overlord was a bit of a magnet for him to try and draw those queens out, but I don't think that that was the case. Um, TLO just did very, very well in that game uh, and read what he needed to. But that being said, though, John, if he'd have had that wall up in time, you can still deal with that a little bit. You can still try and deal with it. Yeah, it, it's tough, though, because, he, you know, the gas that he had built up together for that lair, he could have gotten enough Bane Links to try to smash through. As you said, though, it would have given Hyun time to get the roaches up, but just a really nice play and a very ballsy maneuver by TLO. He wanted to go for the lair. He wanted to play the fast tech, and he got speed for what seemed to be defense. And then making that read off the scout, it, it, takes, it does take a little bit of bravery to just completely throw your build to the wind and say, I'm going to try to kill him right now because I see an opportunity and I want to explore. Exploit it. I really did think that the four gas guys is going down for Hyun was going to be for like a committal to speed as well as maybe a baneling nest to try and deal with what his opponent was going to throw him after he realized he'd been scouted. Um, but at the same time, you can make the argument for if he starts speed, will it ever even be done before the lings get there and try and kill him off? So uh, I think that was just a, you know a little bit of a mishap there for Hyun in that game. Uh, and we'll see where he wants to do. But TLO in game number three is almost certainly, 100% going to be looking out for that again. It is Belshire Vestige, so it's a little bit easier to wall off uh, with Evolution Chambers, etc. But eh, we'll, we'll see what he wants to do. And I think one thing that's important to note is when you compare what the player scouted and who scouted in game number one versus game number two, Hyun saw that there was that early gas for TLO and also realized, okay, well, he wanted to go for a fast spire. When he made that read in game number two, perhaps Hyun was thinking, okay, I'm not really worried about the speed link threat because he went for the tech the last time that I gave him the opportunity to do so. But TLO, who didn't scout in the first game, getting the information in game number two, he's not as easy to predict as Hyun might have thinks. All right, guys, game number three on the way between TLO and Hyun as we have our first series of the day. What a fantastic result for TLO if he were able to win out ZVZ against this man, Hyun, as we have spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner here as our Red Zerg, representing Team Liquid as well as Germany. Give it up for TLO. A lot of fans in the crowd for TLO. Trying to pull through, he did a great job evening up that series with a very precise and uh, tactical decision making uh, in his build order there. He's a popular guy. He is certainly a popular fellow. And spawning up to the top left hand corner, uh, Quantic Gaming representative as well as representing Korea, give it up for Hyun. Hyun took that first map, but guess what? Guess what we have, Kolaris? TLO is going to try to drop the hammer with uh -oh. a very aggressive opening in this game versus Hyun on Belshire Vestige. Uh-oh. Well, Hyun, what was he doing prior in the first two games? He had spawning pool, right, before hatchery. No, Hyun went hatchery first both games. Did he? Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, think, I think this is a really nice... If, if he does the same thing again, this is a perfect read by TLO, basically saying, 
yeah, I could go hatchery first and play even yeah. with you like I did in map number two, but this is a great opportunity to just completely abuse it and try to kill you and secure a very yeah. fast 2-1. It's a good job I asked you that because I had a complete brain fart then, but <laughs> anyway, we will indeed have Hyun going for hatchery first. This could really, really backfire. Obviously, there are still methods which you can defend this from a hatchery first. It's not complete all doom and gloom, but it, it can be very, very difficult. Yeah, I mean, he has the first six Zerglings on the way. He has the Queen coming out and did a little bit of extractive play, not trying to go for the gas just yet. It was a, a nine pull, I believe, so not necessarily the fastest possible, but still very dangerous to this uh, to this hatchery first. The spawning pool is just underway for Hyun. It's going to take incredible control to stop this attack. Yeah, it is. Um, and we're going to have to see that come out here from Hyun as TLO Zerglings do head across the map. Uh, Hyun, he got a drone in between the hatchery and spawning pool, I think, so... Um, just a little bit of greed there, but not a huge, huge amount. The gas is going down behind this as well for TLO. So he has a follow-up from this. He could quite easily go into speed or even just throw down a Bailey Nest very early as well and try and really, really exploit his opponent. Yeah, I mean, he has, the, he has the drone there. He's building the hatchery. Now his Zerglings have the surround on Hyun's hatchery, getting to work on that. There's six Zerglings on the way for the Quantic Zerg player. But this hatchery, I, I don't think he's going to be able to keep this up, Claris. He's got it down to below half health now. There's the cancel. Hyun realizes there's no way he can keep it alive. And there was such a cool thing there that he did. He spread it out the Zerglings around. There's not really too much reason to do that, but he wanted to catch the drone as soon as it popped. He didn't want to be all on one side so the drone could evacuate to a left-hand side or whichever way it will want to go. But Hyun now has to be careful. These Zerglings need to engage in between all of these drones and in good micro with those drones, we'll save one. Yeah, he's doing a little bit of a, doing the dance here, as it were, with these Zerglings. Of course, Sama Creep, the drones, very important to protect as there's a significant worker advantage for Hyun right now in this situation. He's forced to spend his own larva on the Zerglings yeah. as well. So it's not quite, uh, not quite as huge of a lead since Tilo can go back into drones back home. Absolutely bought time, just for the queen there. Once that gets out, you know, you buy, you, you can hit those Zerglings from range. They have a hard time, they don't have speed, so it's really difficult to actually break that. Uh, TLO behind this is going into speed as well as his own hatchery. But Hyun did a very, very good job of not losing a, a single, well, he lost one worker and that's it during all of that. Yes, he had his uh, hatchery like denied for a while, so TLO will be ahead in terms of lava for a little bit of time. And he needs to make sure he doesn't get that denied again. It yeah. shouldn't happen. Yeah, good point. The only drone he lost was the one that was building the hatchery originally, uh, I believe. So, Tilo, though, his follow-up. He's continuing to pump out Zerglings, and he has Zergling speed about halfway done. He's continuing to bring this little bit of, a, of abrasive maneuvering outside of Hyun's base, looking for anywhere that he can jump in and do some damage. And I'm mostly wondering, there's no Overlord too close to uh, TLO's base for Hyun to spot this. Tilo hasn't really committed too much more to drones, and he's pocketing them behind the mineral line of his yeah. natural expansion. This is, this is interesting, because TLO was so down in terms of drones, like it's 21 to 13 right now, that once this speed finishes, I, I think, you know, his action is, yeah, he's got more speedlings on the way. He wants to go and try and do more damage, because he knows he's a little bit behind. He sees the saturation of all these drones and sees that speed's on the way. He knows now, Hyun knows, that there is some aggression coming. He throws down a spine crawler in response, and the Zerglings are already working on this natural. He has to do all of this at the, at the top of his ramp. Yeah, he's trying to set up the ultimate defense there, and I kind of like the way that TLO pulled drones down to his natural to make it look like he was building them for that second base, but the Zerglings, of course, getting into the main, able to see that that was not the case, and TLO picks Aww. off the natural expansion of Hyun. Can he get up this ramp with three queens blocking and two spine crawlers? It's going to be very difficult. This is really good for him, because now he doesn't even have to get up there. He's got drones going behind this. He will start to catch up because his hatchery, uh, the natural's finished. He will have more lava, he'll have more income eventually. And with all of this committal to defense here by Hyun, if these Zerglings just went home, what can Hyun actually do? He goes back down and tries to expand again. If he tries to go for Lings, there's already a ton of Lings for himself, to, uh, for TLO to defend against that. So Hyun is in a really sticky position here. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be in because that threat is still here and there's still no Zergling speed for Hyun. His, he, can't, he can't get the maneuvering advantage to get on top of these speedlings and that allows TLO to do so much more micro. Now the four queens, there's a, there's a decent bit of firepower, but that's a lot of resources he had to invest in the defense, and even then still blocking the hatchery and oh. picking off the drone. Sacrifices a few Zerglings to delay this base even more. TLO's in a great spot. He really is. He was slightly supply blocked there, and now oh, he even sees the layer. He even sees the layer. TLO can react to his opponent really, really well in this position and trying to go for the cancel, and he gets it again. TLO is on top of Hyun doing very well. 
And it's one of those situations where TLO has so much going for him back home, getting the drones together, having the second base that he can start to saturate, that throwing only a few Zerglings here and there to keep this natural delayed as long as possible is a really big win for him. And now Hyun's finally getting the hatchery together once again, has the Queens there, he's brought the spine crawlers a little bit closer, but TLO, Back home, Evolution Chamber is starting up, getting the pneumaticized carapace so his overlords have that speed, and also grabbing himself a Roach Worm. All right, well, we're going to see TLO just fully committing to that. We have the Roach Worm going down for Hyun as well. Uh, of course, there isn't as much production for Hyun just yet. You can make the argument for that he's very safe with those spine crawlers that are up right now, as well as the High Queen number, um, as TLO actually only has one Queen out right now. So not the most amazing of positions in terms of production, uh, so Hyun's going to try and catch up with that as he has quite a few queens, quite a few. Yeah, I, th I think the real big edge that TLO had was the being able to not only get the larva production off of that second hatchery since he was lacking that queen, but also access the resources. Hyun stayed pretty even actually in terms of the drone count the whole time throughout, but they were all forced to be bottlenecked. We see a heavy amount of saturation on the main. He's now just being able to pull them over. But TLO spreading out those drones, he gets more efficient mining and thereby yeah. more income. I mean, as much as, you know, TLO was doing very, very well in his opening stages, Hyun is by no means down and out. No, he's, he's still able to stabilize. He has his plus 1-1 one, one a little bit quicker than his opponent. Hyun, obviously, mining from those gases at his main for quite a while, was banking things up. And look, Hyun even sees the progress of his opponent's layer. That means he knows that his glitter constitution is going to be a little bit quicker. Once he has his natural hatchery up, if he wants to start producing roaches, he's going to have that mobility edge, apart from against these Zerglings, which are probably going to look to deny a third if it ever goes down for Hyun, or go for a counter-attack when he moves out with those roaches. TLO being a little bit nagging with random Zergling run by, <laughs> tries, to, tries to grab a drone for himself. Not too much luck there, but as you stated, we only have... Okay, now he started the plus one carapace uh, TLO has, and he's also started that third hatchery. Um, Cancel it and restart it. The Zergling's still here uh -huh. pressuring this third, picks off the drone that Hyun was sending there, and Hyun's still trying to play without Zergling speed, makes it very Ugh. difficult. TLO's got a he's got big presence here in the sandbox. Transfuses, transfuses, need to go down, and he will be able to save those. Uh, so losing a few of those lings there for that and not really getting too much reward in the end. He's looking for the drone and will get it. Ah, ah. Did he get it? He did. Yeah. yeah. Well done, TLO. Tilo has about five drone kills so far this game, and I think they were all drones that were trying to build hatcheries, <laughs> yeah. Polaris. He's done a fantastic he job of delaying another. these bases. He might get another. Oh, yeah, no, it's... that's too much roaches and too much firepower, surely. Not Tilo oh, says, nope. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> Sixth drone dead. <laughs> no base for you, says Tilo, as his third is now about 70% done. So he's still getting these bases faster. And this worked out actually quite well for uh, Dong Regu against Life yesterday. Being able to get the bases up more quickly, of course, a very different game scenario. Yeah. But Tilo is staying on top of his macro and always keeping his eyes towards the later phase of the game. But Hyun, very uh, also like-minded, is getting his 2-2 upgrades incredibly fast. TLO's playing out this series really well now. Um, the, the one thing that does happen now on Belshia Vestige is that if we go into big roach versus big roach situations, it can be difficult to get a aggressive uh, position to assault your opponent from because, you know, everything's on the high ground. There's good chokes for your opponent to defend in. Uh, so maybe we'll see this play out a little bit longer. And as we said at the very beginning, uh, the very beginning of uh, this mid game, that Hyun is by no means down now. He's he's still very much in this. His upgrades are good. Uh, he's got a nice, not too bad drones. He just needs to catch up a little bit with his opponent. And, uh, well, we'll see if he can really get too much done here. And another important thing to note, of course, the map might be narrow, but it's also got twists and turns yep. every which way for run-bys. Roach is hitting the left side of the base, even a contaminate being used to delay the larva production on the third base of TLO. And moving a couple of overlords to the top right, perhaps trying to threaten the possibility of some type of drop, uh, some sort of mind game. Of, <laughs> he's got a bunch of overlords with the speed I'm not quite sure where there. they're going, actually. I think they uh, need to run away from there, but because he does have pneumatized carapace, he can get out quite, quite quickly. Uh, this in the middle of the map actually gives him really good scouting uh, to see what exactly is going on with his opponent's positioning if he were to fully spread them out. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's those small incremental advantages. We've seen TLO try and poke him with a few links, trying to get a drone kill or two, not doing too badly. Constant use of contaminate. This isn't used nearly enough in Zerg versus Zerg, and Hyun is one of those guys that uses it very, very well. Yeah, it's it's probably one of the one of the things that has such a huge impact that we don't see in yeah. StarCraft 2 as much contaminate, delaying the upgrades. And that's so nice because Hyun's 2-2 is going to be finished at a very nice timing. He's getting both of them together. The plus two attack, somewhat on course for TLO, but that plus two carapace is so far behind. And those upgrade advantages, when it's just Roach versus Roach, or even when you start to go Roach Hydra versus Roach Hydra, the upgrades make a really, really big difference. And now, 
GLO is trying to get a bit on the aggressive towards this third base. I'm not surprised, really. Despite the contaminates on the hatcheries delaying some of the lava, TLO still had economical advantages. This isn't the most pristine position to push into, though. There are a lot of uh, queens there to actually transfuse those units, and TLO realizes that that was not the good engagement position. He's even losing a few more roaches there. Ah, just a slight sting. Uh, so TLO was a little bit over-eager moving into that third base, and even his third base is still being hit by a few roaches with Burrow as well. Hyun's doing, uh, taking nice steps to bring himself back in. Yeah, he's using all of the, the harassment tools that Zerg has available, the contamination using the Burrow, and I mean, aside from that, roaches regenerate health very quickly while burrowed. If they get into a big scrap, he can recover faster from that. He doesn't have to wait as long for his units to heal. The Overlord for TLO is still running around and scouting. And now we have both players mm -hmm. switching into Hydralisk. The Groove Spines upgrade is on the way for TLO. The ha uh, Hydralisk end is just finished for Hyun, so it's going to be that Roach Hydra, and now TLO is the one deciding to go for the Infestation Pit. Yeah, we see that much more, uh, mixed in much more here on Battleshare Vestige those units are going to clump up a whole lot more than Derelict Watcher. Uh, so there is that uh, potential that that will occur. Hyun sending a few more roaches down to the left-hand side for, once again, an assault on that third base. Uh, and he is now maxed out. So he was just the sledgehammer approach of Roach Hydra straight to the max out. TLO's the one trying to transition. Um, and with the, two, with the two plus two carapace finishing up as well, I don't think he's going to get caught off guard here as TLO, so he should be he should be okay once an engagement comes until he gets those infestors now. He just needs a little bit of time. Neither player has a hive, so with no plus three upgrades available, it's not... The, yeah, up, the upgrades yeah. are no longer really an issue. The Roach is still doing their little Do dance with the Burrow. The uh, Hydralisks picking off a few of them, but, you know, this this retreat that he's forced TLO on is very nice. I'm mostly wondering, how many Hydralisks does he have back home to defend? 15, uh, 16 now, so TLO with all of his forces together, Roach Hydra can, can take a pretty good fight against just pure Roach. I think more importantly than anything, he's got 16 worker kills with all of that little harassment down to the south, so uh, it's been very, very good for Hyun here, just for the cost of a few Roaches, which is, uh, you know, not too expensive at all. Hyun's trying to lure his opponent down onto the low ground. Is he actually going to push up there? I, that would be scary if he were to. It'd be very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, TLO is making that transition into the Infestors. We have Hydra Speed on the way, but the Pathogen Plans upgrade. There will be fungal growths coming into this mm. game, trying to lock down the positions, of course. There's so many of those twists and turns, as you mentioned, but TLO's the one trying to press Whoa. down the rip while those roaches at the third base. There was an all right setup there for Hume, but he wasn't on top of things fully. He was trying to deal with a few of these units at the back, as these roaches and the are doing a lot of damage here for TLO. Not only that, but Hume doesn't have that much of a bank behind this. So once TLO overpowers him, he's going to take a significant army supply, a very big army supply. If he goes to push now, could try and do something, but he's got to clean this up. Hyun now is in the position where he once again has to buy some time. This is going to be interesting. That's a huge army, uh, Nathanius. That Hydralis camp gave TLO so much more firepower. Hyun immediately trying to remax on Hydras himself, but he doesn't have the resource. He doesn't have the larva available. He's stuck at 134 supply versus 178 of TLO, and he's pressing now towards that fourth base. There's not enough here to defend this, Calaris. No. He's going to press in and shut this hatchery down. Oh, it was so clear during that engagement that Hyun was all of his attention. He was like sending those roaches into the mineral line over the other side. If he'd have taken that engagement a little bit more, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker then he would have had the concave advantage, guaranteed. Maybe not the full firepower advantage that we were seeing there. And TLO, he, he did that so, so well. And now this pressure, I don't think he can push in just yet. If he does, it's not going to be as cost effective for him. Obviously, he can and do a lot of damage. I, actually, no, now that I say that, he, he could just push in and do a lot. But the concave would always be there for Hyun. Uh, and the trade would be interesting. Well, the question is exactly how much does he want yeah. to trade? TLO has secured his fourth base. It's something that Hyun does not have. If he gets the mining there, he can start to make some more of these cost and effective trades since he'll have more resources to spend on that. Exactly. But he has also take into account TLO's army does need a little bit more time to heal up after that initial fight. Most of Hyun's army is at high health, sending some roaches into attack at the third base as well. And now TLO getting out the infestors four on the way. This is where he starts to get in that position where he can really Whoop. lock down Hyun's army. Have to be a little bit careful. Those Hydralists at the front, he's trying to reposition himself, knowing that those Hydralists are very squishy. The Roach is trying to pursue the Hydras, whilst, well, actually, we've got a kind of weird yin-yang situation going on here where they're both trying to kill off the Hydralists. But the Roaches now are tanking quite a bit of this damage for TLO. Army supplies, though, in favor here of Hyun. So he pushes this back again. TLO a little bit eager in those engagements. And behind that, he didn't really have the full strength economy that he wanted. Yeah, very, very important to note, you know, aside from those drone losses earlier, Hyun uses the burrow very quickly, unburrows. The Infestors are coming out now, but the Hydralisks being Blah. engaged by the Roach is not fun. Infestor gets sniped. 
for free in the middle of the field. There's three drones here by this hatchery, and Yun should be able to take this out. He doesn't want to take this fight just yet. Here come the fungals, Kalaris. Oh, not the most amazing one for the first, and not the most amazing for the second. Hyun will push this back, as a few roaches do rendezvous with this army for Hyun to continue piling on the pressure. There's not a huge amount of energy left over here for TLO for those fungals. He has like two fungals in him right now. If Hyun spreads his units, he could do quite a bit. Yeah, he's coming in now, grabbing the fungal on this army, and Hyun needs to watch out for overextending a little bit. Uh, he does have a nice concave by hitting both this army from two sides at once. He's actually doing quite a significant amount of damage to TLO, but still trading relatively evenly. Uh, TLO holds a little bit of a supply advantage. There were a few drones off the line there as well, trying to keep those safe during all of that. TLO takes the army supply advantage again, but now he's slightly down in drones. He's down by about 15. Uh, so can Hyun replenish himself? He has a little bit of money. He actually has quite a bit of money uh, that he can replenish a, a few units with. So I think he makes up the numbers uh, and then this game continues on. But TLO, off all of this, takes another hatchery over to the right. He's already got the one over at the left. He's going to have a lot of lava. And if he gets more drones out, he's going to have a lot of economy. Yeah, I honestly thought he was taking the right side base because he thought he would lose the left fourth. But a good point. also interesting to note, Hyun, Went for the infestation pit just like TLO, never got pathogen glands, he's not looking at infestors, he's trying to just win this straight up with Roach Hydra in adding in, uh, trying to replenish that queen count as well. He's actually <laughs> building another infestation pit as Forgot. I say that, I don't think, maybe yeah. he didn't realize he got the infestation pit in the first place. Autopilot man, completely autopilot. It happens sometimes, but uh, now Hyun here, just trying to stay, as I said, he is the sledgehammer. He's that guy, basic, basic tech units, just comes in and tries to strike hard. Uh, nothing, not too much fancy about Hyun, uh, but it hasn't worked fully thus far in this game. And TLO is gathering stability once again. Drone counts 53 to 51 in favor of Hyun. TLO still playing this out well, but Hyun is not backing down at all. No, he's not. Not at all. We have investors continuing to come out for TLO. This is one of those situations where I feel like he wants to just replenish his forces. It's kind of it's kind of one of those weird balances where if you build too many more drones, how much army supply are you cutting out of your full potential? Both players very, very close as far as the worker count goes. Not really wanting to go far above that 55 drone marker. And Pathogen Glance has started up for Hyun mm -hmm. quite late um, with that double infestation pit. But the Roach is continuing to bring this pressure on towards the left side uh, fourth base of TLO. Right, we have another infester going to be joining with TLO as well. Here, his army supply is 130 to 102. If he was able to land good fungals before these eight infestors would somehow pop, if we were to go for an engagement, but he's not going to, uh, then that would be great. But once again, Hyun exploiting that burrow, just trying to kill off a few drones here and there. He's killed off 41 workers during this whole game. And that's been a lot that TLO has had to replenish, and that certainly cut into him. If Hyun hadn't done all of these little bit of aggressive moves, then in this game, I'm pretty sure he would be dead. Oh, certainly. Pathogen Glance finishing up now. 12 Infestors will be coming out wow. for Hyun. He's really going to take a bit of a dominating position with that area of effect with the board control. There are only five on the field right now for TLO. Still trying to get out a few more Hydralisks. He's playing with a more meaty composition, not as much as Spellcasters of about 13 uh, Roaches and also up in the Hydralisks. But these Roaches for Hyun keep coming in, sniping off drones to the left side forth and burrowing as soon as the army comes to do something about it. Yeah, this is, uh, it's, it's funny because Jun had all of that gas bank up. I guess he's like, well, oh, oh, I did have that infestation pit all along. That's where the gas was supposed to go. He had 1,500 at a, good, uh, a moment in, that, in this game. Uh, so now we'll get out all those infestors in. He's going to have a lot of fungals. Uh, 12 infestors against five right now in favor of Hyun. Once these engagements come, Hyun, we said he's the sledgehammer, but when it comes to those surgical and well-placed precise fungals, he certainly can execute them very well. Yeah, and now just continuing to bring these roaches for the harass. You know, the one interesting thing, though, to consider in this, in this situation of the game is that the main base is running quite low. The natural expansions low themselves. So it, it comes into that position where Hyun can get good trades, but unless he secures this fourth base that TLO has denied him all game long, TLO, at the very worst, can move his drones to one of his two fourth bases. He's already started to saturate both of them a little bit, and it's going to allow him to build up a bank much, much more quickly than Hyun can. Oh, this has been such a close and good ZBZ. It really has. Uh, there's been back and forth. There have been moments where Hyun has looked uh, very, very worryingly close to death. But uh, TLO here has set himself his army up very nicely. If you were able to catch this army in, the, in these kinds of positions here, oh, but look at this. Just snaking in there. Fortunately, there's no drones to kill, but you can maybe get the Roach Warren if he were to be lucky. Uh, He's just trying to, both players are just kind of trying to draw each other out of position and try and get small incremental advantages with, you know, uh, drone kills, tech kills, anything of the like. 
Yeah, the one nice thing for the situation is that TLO, uh, despite you know, not having the burrow access, actually managed to get a nice catch here. The Infestor's actually throwing a couple of these fungals caught out using that burrow move. Uh, but, but what I was saying, Ooh. he has the high early, he can get his 3-3 three, three faster. Oh, this, uh, this might have backfired for TLO. He's losing quite a bit of his army that has been isolated in weird locations. Uh, so all those roaches and hydralists are going to die guaranteed without really doing anything. He doesn't even have that much gas behind this to replenish fully. So that was a big, that was a bit of a hit there to TLO. He lost a lot of his army supply. It's now 136 to 120 in favor of Hyun. This is actually a really tough position to be in. Like you said, all those minerals, not, Zerglings, not something that's really going to be useful in this situation. He needs to continue to get these roaches out. And now the left side, fourth base, is going to be destroyed, throwing down the infested Terrans, bringing his army over. And TLO, oh. he's, he's going to have a hard time holding this army off. Yeah, this is really difficult because those infested, those infestors as well are just leading the charge. And look at this, TLO knows he couldn't take that engagement straight up with those infestors poised to land the fungal growth on it. So he's just going to go straight for his opponent's fourth as well, trying to shut that down. But Oh, uh, well, we have a full-blown ZVZ kind of base trade situation going on. Not something you see every day, Calaris, as he presses in, kills off the fourth of his opponent. The majority of the mining remains at this third. If he can shut this down, he can prevent Yun from collecting more resources, but he has more in the bank. He can replenish more quickly, or at least replenish something. And also keep in mind that in this base trade situation, having access to the burrow is very nice for not only healing the units, but from staying hidden from the opponent. Base trade situation, the more investors you have, the better you are going to be. And if you've got those energy units, you're going to be happy. I think that in the end, uh, you know, this this is testament to how close this game has been. Hyun, though, battling back so well. TLO is kind of mining still at that base. He's throwing down a lot of spine crawlers, but. So Hyun would have been, I think, happy to take that engagement with the amount of investors he had. TLO was not. So TLO is the one that kind of instigates the whole base trade situation. Uh, he's doing all right. As long as he can hold this base, can he hold that fifth base he has? Yeah, it's a, really, it's a really interesting uh, s scenario because I don't think there's any detection at this base either. There's no spore crawler if there's any weird burrow shenanigans that were going to happen. He's rebuilding the lair. He doesn't actually have any overseers on the map either. Very important to note. But the investor count, very close. 13 for TLO versus 10. Yes. He's just actually going to press in here since the whole army's not here. He got a few out. He certainly did. And now Hyun actually trying to barrel up here. But these fungal ghosts have been locking down Hyun quite nicely. His army supply is 106 to 110. TLO needs to get back here with his whole army. He's trying to come from the top side, but it's not there just yet. He's trying to kill off the hatchery, morphing, but at the same time, it does end up going down. That's he's a lot running of firepower. Of, he's running out of buildings. He only has these two extractors. He, Hyun's is coming in now. He's fighting against this army, and uh, TLO needs to kill this off before he can get it, but... Oh, uh, one if he just focuses the extractors, he would kill him. He would kill him, but now, actually, he's just losing all of his army as well. The infested Terrans provide that power during all of this, and TLO is down and out. Hyun is able to actually shut all of this down. What a close EVZ. So, so close. And Hyun choosing to chase down the forces rather than just kill off the last two buildings of our German Zerg player. A fantastic match all throughout. The Hydras try to come in, make a last ditch effort, but the infested Terrans doing what they can, focuses down the extractors, and that's going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. GG! Quantic Hyun takes the first series of the day two to one, but at the same time, wow, TLO. He looks pretty good. He looked pretty good. Yeah, what, what a crazy fight. And you have, you have to wonder. How, how uh, efficient is it to pull up certain parts of your army away to try to snipe away the rest of Hyun's buildings? Because he doesn't <laughs> have the left side fourth. If even half of TLO's army is there with all those spine crawlers and the fungals, then maybe that comes out completely differently. And then also after having to consider just how close it was with the last few buildings being there, Hyun really didn't even take the fight. He could have just focused down the buildings themselves. Very, very close there in the end. And there's the winning moment from that best of three. But again, you know, Hyun, he is a master of ZVZ. So there is certainly no shame for TLO uh, bowing out after such close games as well. That, that second game, if it wasn't for Hyun's absolute constant harassment with those roaches time after time after time after time, then uh, we could have seen Hyun die in that game. Yeah, it was, it was really the harass that kept him alive because TLO had secured so many early advantages, delaying so many times the natural and the third base. But, uh, you know, congratulations to Hyun taking that match. And we have uh, an interview with Hyun, actually, on the main stage with Smix. Yes, we will do in just a second. Uh, so, um, I, what other games are you looking forward to today here? Honestly, I want to see, I want to see, uh, I want to see TLO just, I want to see the rest of his games. Yeah? That was so good. Really uncharacteristic. It, it, was, it was surprising just how well he, he did versus Hyun. I really thought he was going to be able to take game two. It's, it's going to be interesting because now he has to play against either Zest or Life. Those are some pretty strong opponents. Uh, but 
I would, oh wow, I would love to see a TLO versus Life CVZ actually. Yeah, that would the be rematch. Very fun. The rematch, he beat him at, uh, at DreamHack Summer yeah. to, to qualify for winter, so it's, it's, it's a match he's won before, and that's kind of why I had, I had high hopes from coming in here against Hyun, another great mm. Zerg versus Zerg player. I like it. I like it a lot. I would love to see some more ZVZ. I really enjoy watching ZVZ. Not so much playing it. I said this yesterday. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit tough. But now, guys, we can hear from our Victor over on the stage with Smix and Quantic Hyun. Guys, I'm here with Hyun after an amazing ZVZ series. Honestly, with ZVZ, I, I never know what to expect. And I know Hyun has told me before that ZVZ is actually his favorite and best matchup. So I wasn't sure what to expect, but TLO was able to drag it out to a third set in which he actually looked pretty dominant. But then Hyun, Hyun was somehow able to bring it back and take this series. Hyun, 고소경 선수 이제 이번 경기를 이제 세 번, 세 번째 경기까지 갔는데 어 무슨 생각을 했어요? 이제 첫 번째 경기는 쉽게 좀 이기고 두 번째 경기 갑자기 그그 그 치즈 때문에 지고 그 다음에 세 번째 경기에서는 좀 불리 처음부터 불리했어요. 그래서 솔직히 보는 사람들이 입장에서는 질것 같았는데 어떻게 해서 이겼어요? 좀 얘기해 주세요. 일단 첫 경기에 좀 쉽게 이겨서 이제 이 경기도 좀 쉽게 이길 줄 알았는데. 그 티에로 선수가 두 번째 경기에서 그 레어 페이크를 했어요. 그래서 그거에 당해가지고 좀 쉽게 진, 전, 져가지고 이제 삼 경기에서 이제 두 번째 경기 올인해 죽었으니까 이제 삼 경기에서는 이제 운영으로 하자 해서 준비를 했는데 이제 선포를 해가지고 빌드가 갈렸어요. 분리했는데 어 이대로는 질수 없으니까 최선을 다했는데 어떻게 하다 보니까 이기게 됐네요. Yeah, so I asked him about that series. Obviously, he won the first set. He looked pretty dominant, but in the second set, it ended pretty quickly. Then, obviously, we all want to talk about that third set in which he really just looked behind that entire game. I asked him what it took for him to come back. When he talked about the first game, he said, you know, because I won so easily, I thought the second game I would win easily too. But then in the second game, I saw that TLO actually, uh, I thought he was going for Lair, but he actually faked it, and that's why I lost that game. And because that game ended so quickly, in the third game, I thought, all right, let's go for more of a macro game this time, since he went for a, a little bit more of a cheese that game. And I was kind of at a huge disadvantage in the beginning because he kept taking, uh, he kept killing my drones, preventing me from expanding. And so from the beginning, I felt like I was just not doing so good. Uh, he just had a really, really good build against me. But somehow I just kept fighting, and uh, that's why I was able to come back. You know, that was just, I I'm still at, law at a loss to how he how was able to come back in the game. I was just sitting at the edge of my seat. Now, 일단 한국 선수는 누구든지 다 힘들다고 생각을 하고 어, 최선을 다해서 1등으로 올라가도록 하겠습니다. You know, I asked him how he feels about playing Life next because Life actually beat Zest in the same group. And he says, you know, obviously Life is a really, really amazing player, but I'll try to do my best so that I can win and get out of this group. Guys, thank you so much, Fion, for taking the time to do this interview. We're going to take a break, uh, do an analysis of those games because obviously there was a lot going on. Whew. Hello, New York and everybody at home. I'm here with my screen to try to go through these games. First of all, before we look at game number three, what a series this really was. I was watching it backstage, and it was a very high-level, good set of games. Game number one and game number two displayed two different styles. TLO going for early zergling speed, going for early bailings, trying to get damaged on early, versus Hyun, who opened up completely away from gas going for a very heavy mineral focus play. And we really saw the game develop from game one, where TLO didn't do too well, to game number two, where he went for an attack that won him the game, to game number three, where he opened up, as Hyun said, with a build to counter his opponent. His opponent opened up 15 hatch every game. TLO opened up with nine pool and got an advantage in the early game. And now I want to look at this specific, this specific moment where the advantage fell away from TLO and how he lost that game. So this is one fight which TLO takes with his advantage that's been drawn out since the five minute mark to 18. It was really toe and toe, pretty parallel. And then this fight puts it in TLO's favor. So let's look at this fight. So the advantage that TLO has stained from the early game, he's been able to put into a much, much higher Hydralisk count. It's at 16 here compared to five of his opponent. The Roach count is pretty much identical, but the extra amount of damage from these Hydralisks in this fight given the edge. And from this position, he's actually set to win the game. But why didn't he set? Why didn't he win the game? 
So let's fast forward it past this. You can look at the supplies, 160 to 140. He's winning, he's winning, he's winning. He's got a fourth base. He stops his opponent's fourth base. But where does it really go wrong? And what the case of this is, is that TLO is so eager to win. He knows he's winning, he wants to win. He's looking for a fight wherever he can find one. He, he knows he's on four bases. I want to pause it for a second here. In a game like StarCraft, when you're in the lead, you want to end the game right there, right then, because you know if you do that, you're actually going to win against Hyun. A fantastic player who's won many tournaments this year. But the downfall for TLO, that he was way too eager, I felt, in this position. He's on four bases. He's got a fourth hatchery down in the bottom left. He can easily start to mine from this base. Suffocate your opponent. Play it slower. He's on three, as we can see, and his main base has run out. So technically, he's only mining on two. And if you're able to take your fourth base, you've got such a better income. You're going to be able to bank a lot of money. And whatever fight you take, you'll be able to remax so much faster because of the amount of money that you've got saved up. But let's look at this. Tilo decides to take a fight eager to win the game. And it actually costs him the game. Not really the game, but puts him at a downside. Look at the fight he has to take. Look at his Hydralis. I think he may have shot his own Roach. I'm not too sure what happened there. That's the damage output right here. And it's been, he's been hit and brought down really fast by the Roaches. And look at the Hydralis of Hyun on the high ground. They're not being touched. TLOs are exposed. A bad fight. So let's fast forward it a lot more. And let's, let's really ramp it up and fast forward. From this position now, TLO's on the back foot. TLO's down in supply, and all of a sudden that advantage he had is gone. And then from this position out, Hyun, beautiful play, looking for the best fight. And then there was one fight which just cost him the game. Um, it's about around 28 minutes, so we'll try to get there as fast as we can. Unfortunately, replay speed is pretty slow. <laughs> So what ends up happening on the left-hand side here, Tilo makes a flank. You'll see it happen on the minimap. Makes a red line of units, waiting for his opponent to come down to his only mining base, what Hyun thinks. But Tilo gets caught out. When you split your units up like that, you need to make sure you win. Fast forward it a little bit more here, because we are running out of time, and I really want to be fast. Look at this position. It's really nice if he's 100% committed to a fight. Unfortunately, look on the right-hand side. Pause it now. On the right-hand side here, look how many Tilo's units are missing. That's a lot of units. That, they need to be there. If you're going to set up a flank, you've got to nail it. You have to hit it hard. He's split up. He hasn't got all his units. And Hyun has everything there. It's one massive unit. Tilo gets caught off. And from this position, we fast forward it to the end of the game. It's game over. So unfortunately, a really close series. A series I feel should have gone to TLO. Mistakes can happen at this level. This amount of pressure when you're playing on stage. He's about to beat Hyun. He was so close to beating him, but unfortunately so far. And from their position, a base trade was imminent, and Hyun was always going to win with the higher numbers. So guys, thanks for listening. Hope I didn't bore you. And now I'm going to pass it over to Red Eye on the main stage. Yeah, I don't think you could ever bore us with your analysis, Apollo. Uh, great stuff again from Sean there, breaking down that game. What a fantastic way to start the Intel Extreme Masters on day two here in New York City. A fantastic victory for Hyun in the end, and we'll see him again in our next matchup. He goes live against life in the final. It'll be the first time we've seen one of these two players go through to the quarterfinal, already making our way to the round of eight, which starts tomorrow. Uh, TLO will get another chance, of course, in the lower half of the dual tournament bracket in Group A. We're going to take a very quick break in a moment, but first, don't forget, you can still interact with us via social media. Those uh, clever people on Twitter have been posting pictures of me as Captain America. That's very funny. Not. But if you like them, that's fine. Go and join in with the chatter. Uh, make sure you use the hashtag hash IEM, of course. And maybe, just maybe, your tweets will feature as part of the show. Keep supporting us. Keep tuning in. We've got more games from StarCraft 2 coming next. Only from the Intel Extreme Masters, New York.
professional grade communication tool. The choice of professional teams. Perfect stream viewing experience. Chosen by online streamers. Easy to use voice messenger service. Chosen by over 12 million gamers. Communication is always vital when competing in tournaments. Winning a match requires perfect coordination. You cannot win by yourself. Raid Call. Communication for winners.